Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about angiogenesis or is also called neovascularization. So there's also and this is the formation of, of new blood vessels and in embryology on a different topic if you're talking about the way that the blood vessels are created and expand why we are being uh, are we why we are growing as embryos as zygotes um, you know as children as babies um, it's called vasculogenesis and this is angiogenesis and neovascularization which is different and re only refers to uh, tissue injury or uh, rather just after after um, child development development okay so there's two ways that this happens one and two angiogenesis by mobilization of the EPC cells um, from the bone marrow so these EPC cells are in the bone marrow and little is known about this but they have found some um, evidence to kind of support this theory that these EPC cells are from this bone marrow somehow they are attracted to this uh, injury and they come out and they you know they they're just camping here in this in this injury and this is kind of uh, granulation tissue in the last video we talked about this granulation tissue and this is that pink soft um, new tissue that forms around a scab um, or a scar these EPC cells camp out and they kind of are uh, directions or roadmaps if you will for these new blood vessels that are being formed uh, the most common way or that we understand mostly is this angiogenesis pathway from pre-existing vessels so um, you know the, here's an artery right here and then you injure a tissue over here well then it's gonna there's gonna be a little capillary sprout that kind of buds off from from this blood vessel and it's gonna go over to this um, tissue uh, that's being that's being remade and it's going to help with, uh, it's going to form this capillary network. And, you know, it's going to form too much, if you will. And then uh, there needs to be some pruning and some remodeling. And we're going to talk about this process. But there's going to be some pruning and remodeling to kind of, when this tissue is all said and done, to uh, be more efficient in its blood flow to the area. And I got this picture from Robin's Basic Pathology 8th Edition. Yeah, Kumar is the author. So what are the steps of this angiogenesis or neovascularization? First, it's vasodilation, and that is caused by nitric, ac uh, nitric oxide. So inside these little vessel walls, there's these endothelial cells, these one-layer thick cells, <clears throat> especially in these capillaries. But this vasodilation occurs because of this nitric oxide. So NO is, re is released from these cells, and they're kind of uh, paracrines. Uh, you know, we talked about paracrine, autocrine, and endocrine concepts in uh, previous videos. But they kind of release to adjacent cells, and they kind of cause uh, this uh, vasodilation. They cause the cell, this tube, to become, to become bigger. <clears throat> and there's also increased permeability, and this is done. This is um, caused by vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, and this is an important kind of growth factor. And the vascular permeability allows new cells to kind of come through. Um, <clears throat> That just leads us into the next one. Migration of the endothelial cells toward the area of tissue. So this increased, this vasodilation and increased permeability is kind of like an acute inflammation process, but under different, different molecules and under different controls. But these endothelial cells, so these cells kind of, you know, they migrate out into this tissue here. They migrate out into here. And that and that's what that's why they can do that is because this vasodilation and vascular permeability. So then you have these endothelial cells that once they're out in these out in this uh, extracellular matrix, they start proliferating. 
So the proliferation of endothelial cells just behind the leading front of the migrating cells. So you have these migrating cells that are right here. They're kind of leading the pack. And these guys start proliferating and start forming this new, this new um, sprouting capillary. So, and then once you get this, <clears throat> so this process happens and there you get a lot of different uh, blood vessels coming into this area. And then you have to go inhibition of endothelial cell proliferation and remodeling into capillary tubes. So there's a process that inhibits for like this from this cell from going out this way. There's a process to inhibit that. And also there has to be, like I said, pruning and uh, uh, pruning and <clears throat> <clears throat> and um, cleaning up of these, you know, these blood vessels so that's more uh, efficient in its blood flow. And then you have to recruit the peri-endothelial <clears throat> cells. These peri-endothelial cells, um, they're periocytes for small capillaries, and they're smooth muscle cells for larger capillaries. So this larger cell, you'd have to recruit these smooth muscle cells that will come around and circle these endothelial cells because these smooth muscle cells will cause contraction and vasodilation of the blood vessel. Because these endothelial cells, they're, they can contract on their own, but they're not as efficient as if you have a layer of smooth muscle around here that can squeeze this in, squeeze it in if it needs to, or, or bring it out, or bring it out. And these peri periocytes, around these little capillaries, if you will, are you know just little cells. They're kind of like this process here, but they're for capillaries. And this will turn it into kind of a mature uh, blood vessel. So those are the kind of the steps of angiogenesis and neovascularization into a tissue. So we were going to talk about the growth factors, these growth factors of this process in the next video. We'll see you in the next video.